Good morning, and welcome to the Sunday morning worship experience of the Little Union Baptist Church. I'm here to provide this week's announcements before we get started with today's worship service. Please support Voice and their coalition partners on July 9th at Mount Zion Baptist Church of Triangle. The assembly will begin promptly at 3 p.m. and end promptly at 4.30 p.m. All youth are encouraged to attend Youth Church on Sunday, July 9th at 10 a.m. A joint board meeting will be held Tuesday, July 11th, and a church business meeting will be held Thursday, July 13th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Men's Fellowship will be held Saturday, July 15th at 9 a.m. via Zoom. Deacon Vern Ashby will facilitate. Fellowship continues in the early portion of Chapter 2. The first case study was taken from Proverbs 3, 1 through 12. The second case study was taken from James 3, 13 through 18. We encourage all men of LUBC to participate. The youth ministry will be delivering meals to the Falazzo Shelter on Saturday, July 22nd. Please join us for the next wild service to celebrate our 120 year church anniversary on Wednesday, July 26th at 7 p.m. The Reverend Dr. Henry B. Duran Jr. of Star Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church will be our guest preacher. Women's Fellowship and First Monday Prayer and Fasting are canceled for the month. Noonday Bible Study for July 5th is also canceled. We will resume our Summer Breeze one hour worship service from July through September, except for the 120 year church anniversary weekend. Please continue to support Souls for Souls with your new or gently worn shoes. A drop box is in the foyer. Please join Pastor Sessoms Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. for Morning Glory via Facebook Live and YouTube. And as always, Little Union, please join us for Bible study every Wednesday at 12 p.m. and Sunday school every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom and Facebook Live. Okay, Little Union, the worship service will begin shortly. Thank you for your time and enjoy the service. Amen. Can we give God praise this morning? But this is the day that he has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I know y'all can do better than that. I said this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. You didn't come to serve me. You didn't come to worship me. But you come to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. What a mighty God that we serve. Come on, can we stand? all over the building amen and let's come together amen and worship the god in the beauty of holiness you know we're on the battlefield am i right huh oh on the main line i knew it was one of those amen you on the bat i'm on the battlefield and he's on the main line thank god jesus is on the main line and you know what since he's on the main line you can tell him what you want Call them up and tell them what you want. Amen. Come on, let's join the men as we sing. Tell them.
our deacon will pray. Amen. The prayer over God's people. Amen. All minds, hearts are clear. Let's bow our head and talk to the Lord this morning. Just a little while. Lord God, you see that a few of your people have come this way this day to this place of worship. We pray that your spirit will fall heavy upon each one as they have a need. And you know, Lord God, we all need you in our own special way. Ways that we don't talk about. Ways that only you know. Ways that only you can help us make it through. And we thank you, Lord God, for thinking on us in each and every way that you're doing this day. Yes, Lord. We pray prayers of thanksgiving for you having brought our pastor and first lady through the pneumonia that they suffered here this earlier last thank month. You. Thank you. And for the con continued healing that you've given their daughter, Kirsten. Yes, Lord. And keeping your love arms around and your hands of protection over their son, Jeffrey. Yes, we thank you, Lord God, for each and every member of this church, yes, especially for the, the leadership who's trying to do your work and your will to this branch of Zion. So now as we get ready to receive the word from you, Lord, we pray that your spirit again will just bless each and every one, each and every household, each and every person that's on the way or who could not be here today. And we ask these things in the name of your darling son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We sing praises to your name. to July. My goodness, the seventh month of the year. And we give God praise that he has kept us, he has brought us, and sought us with his redeeming love. Amen. We want to honor everyone who's here today, and we give God praise for all of you who have joined us in the sanctuary, and also those who join us by Facebook Live and our, uh, our live stream on our website. Amen. We say good morning to you, and we pray God's blessings upon you. Brothers and sisters, I want you to continue to uh, pray for our sick, those who are on the sick list, that God will continue to bless them, heal them, amen, keep them, amen. It is, amen, our prayer that God will lift them up where they belong, amen, amen, amen. Continue to pray for our sick, amen. Also want to say happy birthday, amen, to those who are celebrating birthdays, amen, on July uh, yesterday, amen, Sister Jackie Banks, amen. amen, celebrated a birthday on yesterday, amen, amen, God bless you, ma'am, uh, Sister Elaine Carter's birthday will be on the 4th of July, amen, Brother Carter can't forget her birthday, amen, Sister Bria Roa celebrating her birthday on the 14th, Sister Candace Berg is celebrating her birthday on the 15th, uh, Deacon Hazard is celebrating his birthday on the 18th. Brother John Story is celebrating his birthday on the 22nd. Sister Brenda Jones is celebrating her birthday, amen, on the 26th. Brother Andrew Perry, amen, celebrating his birthday on the 29th. Trustee Charlotte Hickles is celebrating her birthday on the 29th. 
Also, Sister Stacy Simmons is celebrating her birthday, amen, on the 29th, amen. And also, we want to say happy uh, anniversary, amen, to Deacon Howard and, and Deaconess Inez Franklin, who will be celebrating, amen, their anniversary on the 10th of July. And then uh, Deacon Arthur and Sister Elaine Carter, amen, amen uh, will be also celebrating, amen, um, on the 19th of July, amen. Amen. And so I want to say to you, uh, Deacon Carter and Sister Carter, that we are continuing to pray God's blessings upon uh, you two as well. Amen. Amen. Now, we've had some folk to have registered for this meeting uh, that we're having at the Mount Zion Church uh, with Voice. It's a meeting about youth behavior health and uh, asking the governor to continuous fund uh, this new uh, 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 crisis um, receiving center that will be opening, amen, uh, uh, probably early in 2022. Uh, we see the names who have uh, registered, and I know how some folk are, you know, you wait till the last minute, sometimes you don't register at all, you just show up, amen. That's how we do sometimes, but we ask that you would, amen, you have the email, you have the link, if you would do that, amen. We're expecting a wonderful crowd, it's gonna be good music, we're gonna be praising God, amen, we're gonna have a great time in that meeting on, um, July the 9th. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you will, because this is Summer Breeze, right? Amen. Amen. So we're going to try to keep our worship experience to around the hour. Amen. I said around <laughs> an hour. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So if you will, my brothers and sisters, get your Bibles out. Amen. And turn with me to 1 Kings 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 13. 1 Kings. Come just before Second Kings, amen. That ought to help you. And it's in the Old Testament as well, amen. First Kings 1 and 13, amen. And I'll be reading from the New International Version, amen. It says, go in to King David. This is Nathan talking, okay? Nathan the prophet is talking. And, uh, and if you find time this week, uh, during your devotional period, please, amen, uh, go uh, and read this whole chapter in its entirety, and it will be a blessing to you. Amen. Go in to King David and say to him, my Lord, the king, did you not swear to me, your servant? Surely Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne. If that's the case, why then has Adonijah become king? Let me read that one more time. Nathan is talking to Bathsheba, all right? Go in to King David and say to him, My lord the king, did you not swear to me, your servant? Surely Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne? Why then has Adonijah become king? Amen. Continuing our celebration series, today we want to celebrate the Solomons. Celebrate the Solomons. Where are you going with that? Well, you're just going to have to wait and see. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The men are going to give us a selection and we'll come back with the word of the Lord. Amen. Lord, you know that I'm your child, and I'm doing the best that I can. Why my way, it gets so hard, you know I just don't understand. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord I need you to hold my hand. I can't make it without you, Lord. As 
I traveled from place to place. Many times I'm treated so bad. Yes. Then I sit and think about I can't miss a friend that I never had. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I need you to hold my hand. I just can't make it without you, Lord. Oh Lord, I need you to hold my hand. One more time, church. I'm going to continue to run for Jesus. Even if I have to run alone Because it's my determination To make God's beautiful heaven my home Oh Lord, oh Lord I need you to hold my hand Right now, right now, right now, right now Oh Lord, oh Lord I need you to hold my hand I need you to hold me, hold me. Jesus. Jesus. I need you to hold me, hold me. Jesus. Jesus. I need you to hold me, hold me. Jesus. Jesus. I need you to hold me, hold me. Jesus. Jesus. Take my hand, hold me. Jesus. Jesus. Help me stand, hold me. Oh Jesus. Jesus. Lead me to hold me. The promised land Hold me Jesus Jesus Oh Lord Oh Lord I need you to hold my hand Right now, right now, right now, right now Oh Lord Oh Lord I need you to hold my hand I need you to hold me Jesus I need you to hold me I fall. Draw me nearer to thy precious bleeding side. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 
celebrating the Solomons. I recently made a statement at a church that I was preaching at. I said there is a difference between real preaching and popular preaching. I said real preaching is not just what God is talking about or talked about in the past, but it is also real preaching is talking about what God has to say in our present. Popular preaching and uh, on the other hand seems to teach that if you are not rich, then guess what? It's your fault. It teaches that the blessings only come in way of cars, cash, and cribs. Those things uh, that I can call and haul, blab and grab, believe and receive. This is, this, this, this is something some preachers now refer to as materialistic or prosperity theology. It's a principle, platform, and a position that suggests the depth of your faith is seen in how much you accumulate. As if God is some uh, executive manager of the big uh, uh, Walmart in the sky. Amen. And will bless you only if you are nice instead of being naughty. In this kind of preaching, amen, if you are found to be faithful, the prosperity that pr the prosperity will be yours and problems will be somebody else's. And this is the kind of preaching, if you have situations or circumstances, it is because you have failed to practice your faith properly. But all you have to do is read your own Bible. And you know there is no truth in this kind of theology because the Bible is filled with text and testimony, amen, that expressed, amen, the existence of issues and solidifies the certainty of our struggles. There is Job. You called his name, preacher. History teaches us that every now and then, even, amen, good folks experience ruin. But God specializes in redemption and restoration. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. We also have Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Yes, From these three, we have learned that not only uh, uh, sometimes do you have to face, amen, the fire, but you might just uh, get thrown into the fire. But when you have, amen, Jesus with you, not only will you be, uh, will, not only will you not be burned, but when you come out, you won't even smell like smoke. Then, of course, there is Jesus' discourse with his disciples. He said to them, in this life, rewind, in this life, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have delivered and will continue to deliver you because I have overcome the world. Here's the reality, my brothers and sisters. As much as we know the Bible and believe the Bible, when struggle comes, when trials and, and troubles come, when obstacles and opposition come, even though we are people of faith, our flesh, when life gets rough, when life gets hard, we sometimes, my brothers and sisters, amen, uh, want to go to God and ask him, God, what's up with that? What's really uh, happening? Uh, 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 should I say that's what's really happening in this text? What's up with that, God? The Bible wants us to know that David is on his deathbed. He has an older son named uh, Adonijah. And Adonijah was ambitious and yet selfish. This young man had a, uh, 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 this, this young man had a warmth and a wish to be pastor, I mean king. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is nothing wrong with desiring and wanting and wishing, but be careful how you try to orchestrate, amen, uh, uh, the outcome or change the choice when you are the one that is not chosen. <clears throat> Let me quickly give you the background of this text. Now we talk about all the flaws that David had, right? We know David, don't we? He was a womanizer. Oh, y'all got quiet. Oh, it must have hit somebody. 
Somebody must can identify with that. He was a womanizer. He was a murderer. He was a shepherd boy. He didn't smell too good. All right? He was short-sighted, impulsive, undisciplined, and we tend to look over his poor parenting skills. And because he failed to discipline and correct his children, this son is convinced that uh, uh, he, he could live however he wanted. He didn't, it didn't matter, amen, who uh, 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 was hindered or halted, including his father. So not only did he think he had a right to, to the throne, but the Bible says he declared himself heir to the throne, even though he knows Solomon is next in line. Now, in biblical, in biblical days, there was a protocol for succession. The protocol says that the king would name his heir. The king would choose a man who was next to rule and reign. <clears throat> Once the king has named his successor, then there will come some obligations with that. It was equivalent of God making a promise. And so when the king had named his successor, God would obligate himself to seal what he had already, what has already been said. So no matter who tried to block it or stop it, uh, when the king said it, guess what? God sealed it, and, and, and that's what, as, as to that what would be done. Let me give you this for free, my brothers and sisters, since it's first, first of the month. Let me give you something free. It has been recorded in scripture that God has named us, watch this, heirs of God and joint heirs yes, with Jesus Christ. And then God obligated himself to seal what he said. And so what that means is, according to the dictates of divine obligation, it means no person, no problem, no power can stop or block what God has already purposed and planned in your life. Somebody ought to tell yourself, what God has for me is for me. So since the king, amen, uh, um, uh, uh, was the appointed one, the king represented, amen, by word, what God wanted by his will. Let me say that again. Since the king was the appointed one, the king represented by word what God wanted by his will. So it wasn't that David liked Solomon better than the others. It simply means that David had discerned and he knew that whatever he chose, God would make sure it would come to pass. So Solomon, by word and by will, in his, in, 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 uh, 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 is in line to be the next king of Israel. However, Adonijah, exalts himself to be the next, yes, even though the next has already been assigned. Yeah. The Bible says that uh, he gathers together a group of followers who want him to be the next king. Amen. Uh, uh, he, has some, he has some followers who didn't like David. So they decided to team up with him. They did not side with him because they believed in him. They did not side with him because they trusted him. They did not side with Adonijah because uh, they respected him. They, they, they sided with him because they did not like David. And so they were not with him to uplift him. They were uh, with him to undermine Father David. Amen. I don't have time to preach this, but you better be careful about some of the folk who are in your place and in your space because everybody that's in your space is not on your side. Just because they're cheering for you does not mean they believe in you. You ought to tell your worship partner, matter of fact, tell yourself that every follower is not a fan. So Nathan discovers what's going on. He's a prophet, you know. He goes to Bathsheba with some information about what Adonijah is up to. You always, watch this, I'm going to give you this for free too. You, you always need uh, somebody uh, that is close to you who knows the scoop and will give you the scoop as well. Amen. 
Nathan goes to Bathsheba uh, to give her a word, and he says to her, you need to know what's up. David does not know that Adonijah is on uh, uh, the other side of town challenging his choice and positioning himself as king. Adonijah knows uh, 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 that your son, his brother Solomon, is uh, supposed to be the next king. Nathan then coaches Bathsheba, amen, on what to say to David. Let me pause parenthetically and tell somebody, when you get the information, you don't always take off with the information. Sometimes somebody just needs to teach you how to properly handle the information. So Nathan talks to Bathsheba about what uh, she needs to say and how she needs to say it. And, uh, 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 and it was in his coaching that he told her to propose a question to David that arrested my eyes. She is supposed to tell David, if the throne is supposed to be promised to Solomon, why then is Adonijah trying to become the king? Nathan tells her, when you go in to see David, uh, this is what you say to him. If Solomon is supposed to be the next king, then why is this happening? Uh, why is it happening this way when your word is supposed to be God's will? She told him, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, David, but I just need to understand what's going on. If you gave me your word that my son was next, then why is I denied you planning a coronation? Have you ever gone to God when things didn't look right, my brothers, sisters? Things didn't seem right. Things didn't feel right. Things were not going right. Amen. They weren't even a part of being right. Amen. And you had to say to God, God, what's up with that? I mean, I've been faithful, I followed you, I've served you with my time, my talent, and my treasure. I try my best, amen, to get along with people. I love people, and even when people don't love me, I try to leave other folk business alone. So why am I going through what I'm going through? God, what's up with that? God, I didn't sow it, so why am I reaping it? So why am I being punished for this? God, what's up with that? Here's something you can shout over right now, my brothers and sisters. Watch this. Adonijah took the throne, but he only took it, watch this, for one day. I said, he gained power, but he only gained it for one day. Adonijah got control, but he only got it for one day. He was reigning as king, but only for one day. When David, who represents God, got, got word about what was going on, he stepped in and made everything all right. Is there anybody here and out there, amen, that ever had God to show up and shut down some stuff and made everything all right? All right. Hallelujah. I stopped by to help somebody. I stopped by to tell you to hold on. Your help is on the way. Whoever your Adonijah may be, they can, they can raise all the hell they want. Amen. They can dig all the ditches they want. Amen. They can tell all the lies they want to tell. But I, I need to tell you that when that one day is over, God says it's coming to pass and it's over. Somebody need to hear me. You only got one day. Your struggles only have one day. Your disappointment is only for a day. Your heartache is only for a day. The Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That means your struggle is on the clock. Your, uh, your sickness is on the clock. Amen. Your sadness is on the clock. It means your heartache is on the clock. It means your headache is on the clock. Somebody ought to tell their enemies. You on the clock because you only have one day. Hallelujah. It will not last. I know, I, I know, I know Adonijah is getting on your nerves. I know it looks like he's having a party. I know it seems like he's winning, but, uh, uh, but it will not last. So, Sessoms, how do you handle the one day? 
so that I won't break down before I get my breakthrough. I'm glad you asked. You see, it's easy to shout about one day when you've already have experienced 23 hours and 23 hours are behind you. But what do you do when you're only 23 minutes in and you're trying to figure out how I can make it through one day so that uh, 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 you won't break down and, and, and you can get your breakthrough? Let me give you three quick points and then I'm getting out of here. Number one, be careful of unguarded moments. Be careful of unguarded moments. I'm in the text. All you have to do is put yourself in Bathsheba's shoes. She knows her son got next, and all of a sudden, she's told that uh, 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 her, uh, his, his, his stepbrother has slid in and taken his necks. And she knows that uh, she is David's favorite wife. You know David had quite a few. It was allowed back then. Amen. It wasn't always God's. It was never God's perfect will for them to have more than one wife because God knows we know one is enough. Amen. Wink at me, brothers, if you understand what I'm saying. You see, y'all scared to wink. Amen. You're afraid you're going to get the backhand. <laughs> Amen. As a matter of fact, when the chapter opens, the people are putting, watch this, the, uh, 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 David's servants is putting a young woman in, the, in David's bed yes, sir. in order to keep him warm. Yes, sir. Now, David ain't trying to make whoopee. Y'all know what that means. I try to keep it as PG as I could. But the brother was trying to stay warm. That's all. Yes, sir. Because, watch this, and, and many of us can testify, as you get older, you get colder. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Talk to some of these folk that's in their sixties and seventies and eighties. They got they wear a sweater in the summertime. Yes, sir. Cause they cold. Am I right? Yes, sir. So David is old. He's cold. And they put a young woman next to him to try to keep him warm. At this point, David was an old man, and his issue was not temporal, but uh, uh, his issue was thermal. <laughs> Amen. They were not trying, amen. They were trying to help the king stay warm. That's all. The only reason I'm lifting this up is for you to understand what Bathsheba is dealing with because in a real sense, amen, she's got competition in her bed and competition with her boy. Lord, have mercy. And how she responds will impact, amen, both her future and the future of her family. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but whoever or whatever is trying to take your place, whoever is trying to steal your next, God told me to tell you, be careful about what you do next because what you do next has implications on your now and your later. God always has someone to minister to you and advise you during your unguarded moments. Can you imagine how this thing would have gone down if she had chosen to listen to those who had went and, and, stead, and, and, and uh, opposed to those who God sent? Can you imagine how this thing would have played out if she had listened to the Nancys in her life instead of the Nathan in her life? I stopped by to tell somebody, amen, don't you miss your Nathan because you will miss your next if you miss the voice of Nathan. Amen. Is there somebody in the building besides this preacher who is thankful that God will send someone to help you before you get caught up in something that will hurt you? Here's my second point. Trouble always precedes transition. I said trouble always precedes transition. I'm still in the text. David is on his deathbed and it's time for a new king. He has a transition plan already in place. The shift is about to happen. A new move is coming. And God is getting ready to do a new thing. Or should I say, God is not going to do a new thing, but he's going to do the next thing. Amen. You see, a whole lot of us uh, uh, are asking God to do a new thing, but sometimes God just wants to do the next thing in your current thing. 
I'm waiting on my next blessing uh, in my marriage. I'm waiting on my next blessing for my children. I'm waiting on my next promotion. I'm waiting on my next healing. I don't need God to do a new thing. I just need to get ready for God to do the next thing. As a matter of fact, amen, you, you, ought, you ought to tell yourself, I got next. Because if God is in your neighborhood, he's closer than you think. If God is blessing your neighbor, then you know he's in your neighborhood. God is getting ready to do his next thing. God is getting ready to appoint the next thing in leadership. And just before the shift, just before the transition, Adonijah shows up with some trouble. Just before God get ready to orchestrate our next transition, the enemy will always show up with some trouble. You see, before David could, uh, 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 could rest and, 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 and Solomon could reign, Adonijah has to call some ruckus. Let me say that again. Before David could rest and Solomon could reign, your Adonijah will always call some ruckus. Listen, I don't know who this is for, but before your next, you are to expect the enemy to make some noise. Before God sends the transition, expect some trouble. Perhaps, maybe, uh, could it be the reason you're going through some of the things you're going through is because of your next? I said, maybe the reason you're going through what you're going through is not because uh, of your now, but it's because of your next. The devil is raising hell in your now because he's trying to stop your next. And is there anybody here and out there, amen, that can declare that the devil is a liar? He can raise all the hell he wants to in my now. I'm thanking God for my next. You thought you were going through what you were going through because you, were act because you weren't acting right. You thought you were uh, catching all this hell because you didn't have enough faith. You thought you were struggling because God was mad at you. Well, God has sent me to tell you, amen, by the power of the Holy Ghost, that the hell you are catching is just evidence that you've got next. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you shout you got next? Can you wake up louder? Can you wake up enough and shout you got next? Some of y'all going to sleep. Good Lord, it's just an hour service. So stop all that complaining about where you are now and start shouting about your next. Stop posting about your now and start posting about your next. Thank God for your next. And then finally, my brothers and sisters, the next move that God makes for you will not only bless you, but it will blow the minds of everyone around you. I'm still in the text. Because it's this part that gives us cause for celebration. Because <clears throat> I did, the title is Celebrating the Solomons, right? Yes, <clears throat> the, the next king is not supposed to be Adonijah, but Solomon. Now, the reason why uh, uh, nobody is shouting uh, over that is because you're thinking about the Sunday school Solomon. <laughs> you're thinking about the wise Solomon. You're thinking about the Solomon who wrote Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and the Songs of Solomon. Well, amen. You're thinking about, amen, the Solomon who built the temple for God. But let me introduce you to the Solomon before he became the Solomon. Yes, sir. Or this Solomon, should I say. Do you know that Solomon is Bathsheba's son? Bathsheba is the wife that David got illegally yes, sir. and then killed her husband to try to cover it up. Yes, sir. Don't you miss this? It's that Solomon. Yes, Bathsheba's baby boy who got next. <laughs> now, this isn't for everybody, but uh, 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 isn't it amazing what God can bring as a promotion when it first started out to be a problem? Isn't it amazing how God can bring a miracle out of the mess that we created? Amen. Now, I'm not saying that God will bless the mess, but he can take the mess and work a miracle out of the mess. 
And so some of us ought to be shouting right there. Some of us ought to be rejoicing right there, not because God blessed the mess, not because God caused the mess, but God took the mess and made a miracle out of the mess. And I can lift my hands this morning and say uh, 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 that, uh, uh, that, 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 that I and you are miracles from some messes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can somebody shout that God made a miracle out of your mess? Amen. Where are my Solomons in the building? Amen. I ain't been perfect. Amen. I messed up. Matter of fact, I messed up real bad. But guess what? He made a miracle out of this mess. Hallelujah. So I drove 10 minutes down Route 1. I made a right turn on Basetown Road yes, sir. to celebrate the Solomons this morning. Yes, sir. To all my Solomons <laughs> who are not ashamed to admit that you are Solomon. Yes, sir. Because everybody doesn't want to be identified right. with that Solomon. That's right. Amen. You see, you want everybody to know that mama married your daddy. Well, you want everybody to know that papa, you don't want nobody to know that papa was a rolling stone. No, you don't want nobody to know. And wherever he laid his hat was his home. Yeah. And when he died, <laughs> all that was left. Yeah. Lord have mercy. You want to celebrate you you want to celebrate that 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 you have eight brothers and sisters and 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 but you don't want to let everybody know that y'all don't have the same last name. No, you yeah. But for many for 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 my Solomon's in the building, here's what I think. Yes, sir. The reason you can't celebrate your Solomon is because you're ashamed. Well, yeah. amen. You see, sometimes God, watch this, blesses the unqualified just to agitate and aggravate the qualified. Sometimes God put those who don't deserve it, amen, uh, just to get under the skin of those who think they deserve it. So let me ask you the question again. Is there anybody in here and out there who can celebrate being Solomon? My God, I say, can you celebrate being Solomon? Yes, sir. Are you thankful that God blessed you out of <clears throat> my, my, your mess? My mess. Thank you. you would think, watch this, you would think that if God was going to pick a new king, well, it wouldn't be after the aftermath well, well. of an adulterous affair. Well, right? <laughs> but thanks be unto God. That Christ is not like our culture. Because culture will counsel you. Am I right? But God, not only will he conform you, he will transform you and then confirm you. And so, I want to say, good afternoon, little union. I got about nine minutes. That's what it says on the wall. Good afternoon. And may the Lord God bless you real good. But can you testify that there are some things I used to do that thank God I don't do no more. There are some places I used to go, but now I don't go as often. Lord have mercy. I used to say what I used to say, but thanks be to God he helped me to bridle my tongue. Yeah, I got some Solomon in me. I got some mess in me. But I thank God he blessed me. He called me. He gave me my next. He's preparing me for my next. So can you celebrate God's blessings? Can you celebrate his power? Can you celebrate his goodness? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that save a wretch like me. I once was lost. I once was a Solomon. I once was a mess. I was blind, but now I see. Is there anybody in this building that will give God praise? Yeah, you know your life was in shambles. You 
know your life was a mess but he 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 touched me and all the joy that flood my soul something happened and now and now I know he touched me yeah and he all right I say any all right won't he bless you won't he touch you won't he make a way somebody anybody ought to scream and make some noise tell them thank you say glory hallelujah I've been redeemed I've been washed in the blood of the lamb he picked me up me around placed my feet on solid ground do you know him have you tried him and he all right say yeah say yeah say yeah he walks with me I know he talks with me he tells me he tells me he tells me he tells me I am his own and the joy we shall as we tarry there none other has ever known I'm so glad Jesus lifted me I got five more minutes hallelujah thank you Jesus the joy I have tell me and the world can't take it away you can't make me doubt him I know too much about him and he all right say yeah Can somebody help me lift him up? Can somebody make a joyful noise? Hallelujah. May we all stand. Father, thank you. Because all of us have some Solomon and some David in us. All of us have some Bathsheba in us too. But thank you, God, for bringing some Nathans in our life to help prepare us for our next. We don't have to glory in our past, but we can celebrate the past that we had and where you brought us. We say thank you. The doors of the church are open, my brothers and sisters. Is there one today? Amen wants to give their heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. You know you need a Savior. Your grandmama told you about him. Your granddaddy told you about him. Now you know you need a Savior. Is there one today? Amen. We'll give these deacons your hand, but most of all, give God your heart. Maybe, amen, you strayed away, but now you want to come back home. Maybe, love God, you love God's church, and you want to be a part of the Little Union Baptist Church. It's good ground. We won't do you no harm. All we'll do is help you. Is there one? Is there one? If you made a decision online, you see our number, you see our email address, call us, write us, let us know you made a decision. We'll get back with you. We'll help you to grow in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Is there one? Is there one? Thank you, Lord. Amen. God bless you, Deacon. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord.
visitors, and I didn't acknowledge the visitors. I want to acknowledge any visitors here today. We have any visitors in the house? Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Brother, is it, is it Edris? Huh? Idris O'Connor, right? Listen, he's running for office. Come on, brother, real quick. Young man, we need some young voices, some new voices. Hey, as, as you coming, McIntyre, that's your mother? Hey, God bless you, man. He's been talking about you for a long time. Amen. God bless you. Thank God for you coming. Amen. May God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. Brother, go ahead. Baptist Church. My name is uh, Idris O'Connor, and I'm the Democratic nominee running for Coles District Supervisor. Um, I'm running, um, well, first, a little bit about me. I um, grew up in Prince William County. I uh, went to Freedom High School and went off to Nova Virginia, Northern Virginia Community College, and from there went on to George Mason. Um, I currently work at George Mason um, in the mental health uh, counseling center we have at the university. Um, I've been serving my community, leading the Cooperative Council Ministry for the past seven years as the chair. I'm advocating and serving and providing di direct aid to families and individuals facing poverty and homelessness. And I'm running for office because one, we have to address the issue of poverty in our county. 40% of our kids in our county are facing poverty. We have a rising amount of individuals facing homelessness. And so what I wanna do when elected is make wraparound services for people experiencing um, what wraparound services people experiencing mental health issues, homelessness, and just facing poverty in general. Because once we address those issues, we're able to actually make our community more healthier, safer, and stronger, and becoming a role model in the nation on how to deal with those issues. I also want to make sure we put funding towards public schools. You know, every year the board votes to put funding towards funding our schools. And there's some members who question that. We cannot question funding our public schools because every child deserves a good quality education and making sure that they come out successful. And lastly, I want to make sure that we invest in affordable housing. That's a need in our county for both our seniors and both young people. And so making sure that this county is a place for everyone to live and to thrive. And so that's what I'm running for. That's my platform. And you know, I look forward to serving my community because I love this place. I love this community. And I want to make sure that even, you know, no matter what happens, that this community is a place for everyone and that we, we're stronger, you know, going forward. So I hope to have your support. Um, I'll be around, hanging around. And I want to thank you for allowing me to speak today. Thank, thank you. you. God bless. I love to see a young man like himself who has a passion to do the work of Jesus. That is, that is the work of Jesus. Is looking out for the least of these. Amen. Amen. Giving voice to those who don't have a voice at all. Listen, we see people on the corners at these stoplights every day. They have to leave the shelter during the day. They stay in the shelter at night, and some don't even stay in the shelter. Some live in tent cities. You've seen them. And we need to, and we need to help them as best as we can. Amen. So thank you, man, for coming today and I remember your mother we used to work together in ministry at the Life Church amen a few years ago amen God bless you man listen thank you all amen for your attention we in good time y'all come on brothers praise God from whom all blessings flow happy Independence Day happy 4th of July enjoy your week amen if you're traveling be safe amen when you're pumping your gas look to your left or to you and to your right we're living in dangerous times, am I right? Praise God from All blessings flow.
and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And we all sing.